Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and in this video today, we're going to be talking about how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have cut their roster down to 80 players. And yes, I know this is a thing, we will get through it together, but if you guys are new here, go ahead and subscribe, hit the like button if you do enjoy these types of videos, and leave your thoughts about these players being released down in the comment section down below. This came very, very quickly after the Tennessee Titans game, literally the next day. So the Buccaneers did not waste any time. They knew, okay, yeah, we know what we got to do here to get down to 80 players. And that's not a knock on any of these guys. I think that each one of these guys came in and tried to make the most of their opportunities. That's just, way, that's just the way that the NFL business goes sometimes. It's an unfortunate thing, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. So Let's start talking about some of these players and see what they could potentially have in terms of a future with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or just around the league in general. Starting off with Quinton Bell. And I will be completely honest, this one was a little surprising to me. Not like insanely surprising, just draw dropping, dropping onto the floor shocked, but I expected Quinton Bell to last a lot longer in the roster whittling down process, to be honest. Uh, he's been with the team before, last season, on and off, and I think he showed flashes of a pass rusher. Him and Cam Gill, I thought, have done decent jobs in the past to show what they can do. So this one was certainly surprising. Quinton Bell has also been on the channel a little bit as well, and... Uh, yeah, th this one was like, hmm, kind of raised the eyebrows a little bit. I think overall he had a good camp, you know, and I, I think that he did some things in the preseason games and whatnot when he could. Big thing was also he was dealing with some nagging injuries as well that took some time away from him. Overall, I do expect Quinton Bell to have some type of role in the future here as a practice squad player. Uh, potentially even being brought up to the 53-man roster again at some point if he is needed. I think the Buccaneers are very comfortable with where Bell is at in terms of growth and development and whatnot, and I do think he will be back with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We'll see. I, again, I think he had a good camp. I think he has showed flashes before, and overall, I think he could definitely be a practice squad type guy. Nate Brooks, the cornerback, was the next player released here on this list. This one also made me raise my eyebrows. Him and Quentin Bell were two, uh, you know, somewhat surprising cuts, a little surprising of cuts. And you guys know I've talked about Nate Brooks in training camp videos and preseason videos and things along those lines. I thought Nate Brooks had a pretty decent training camp, in my opinion, but... That competition for that fifth cornerback job is whittling down. You have guys like Dee Delaney and Antonio Hamilton who seem to be getting more and more praise from Bruce Arians as the days and weeks tick on here. So Nate Brooks, you know, he, he didn't show, I think, enough flashes in preseason and whatnot to warrant a continuation of him being on the roster, unfortunately. Although I will say he's another guy that you could probably add to the practice squad. Uh, him and Quentin Bell, you know, I think could both be reserve type guys, grow, develop them, see what they've got, and uh, kind of keep them there just in case. So Nate Brooks, overall, I thought he had a good training camp, but not showing up on special teams plays as much as some of the other guys like Dee Delaney and like Antonio Hamilton, I think was what ultimately did him in. But I do think he could, you know, potentially be a practice squad guy there. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, TJ Simmons was the next player who was released wide receiver. This one hurt me a lot. TJ Simmons is a friend of the, ch of the uh, channel. I did interview him recently in this offseason. And TJ Simmons was in a very, very tough situation. A, a just astronomical uphill climb in terms of the wide receiver room being what it is. Uh, there are even very established NFL veteran type guys who have an astronomical climb to make this roster as a wide receiver, let alone the situation TJ Simmons was in. So I, you know, definitely, you know, feel empathy here. And I definitely think that uh, TJ Simmons will get opportunities elsewhere. And I wish him nothing but the best in his opportunities elsewhere. Overall, a lot of these wide receivers who have been with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in reserve type roles, they had good camps it was just translating good camps into good game film was what was kind of the struggle there. And that's completely understandable. Some of these guys haven't played football in a long time. 
some of these guys are you know having jitters because it's their first NFL action so I understand where there would be that type of struggle there so TJ Simmons I'm gonna say it again I'm sorry I'm gonna say it again he could be a practice squad guy okay I think that he offers a lot of ability big bodied pretty physical enough wide receiver he's already learning from some of the guys on this team like Mike Evans like Chris Godwin among others and he I think is a wide receiver you could develop who could potentially be something somewhere down the line I think you could stash him away on the practice squad he may get an opportunity with other teams practice squads as would Nate Brooks and Quentin Bell by the way but I feel like with all three of those guys I think you could call them up if you absolutely needed them and I think that they could still be decent reserve type of guys if you needed to call them up from a practice squad, in my opinion. So TJ Simmons, again, this one hurts my heart, but I know I know that TJ will make the most of his opportunities, be it potentially with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here in the future or somewhere else in the NFL. I wish him nothing but the best. Lawrence White is the second to last player here that was released. Lawrence White, the fourth rather, safety here. And uh, this one was, not to be honest, this one was not too, too surprising. Lawrence White was in a very tough battle there with guys like Chris Cooper, Ross Cockrell, Javon Hagen, three guys who have really been making some noise for that fourth backup safety job, which is what Lawrence White, the fourth, was battling for. Because you already have Antoine Winfield Jr., you already have Jordan Whitehead, and you already have Mike Edwards as your three established safeties. That's not going to change. It doesn't seem like there's going to be any indication that they are going to carry five safeties. So, yeah, you have four guys battling for one spot. Lawrence White was the odd man out, unfortunately. And it's going to be really interesting to pay attention to who the last couple of uh, cuts at that grouping are because Chris Cooper just got praised recently from Bruce Arians for doing some good work on special teams. Bruce Arians has also loved the job that Ross Cocker has made making the move to uh, be a hybrid with cornerback and safety. And then Javon Hagan, I think, has made some plays as well. So that one's going to be a really interesting thing to pay attention to. In the case of Lawrence White, however, though, I don't know what is going to be with him. I know I, I do believe he could end up on a practice squad, be it the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or somebody else. I would imagine, though, it would probably be another team's practice squad. Now, with the expanded rules and everything, uh, the expanded rules of the practice squad and everything, them allowing more players, them allowing veterans and whatnot, they might bring back Lawrence White. Um, although I could just as likely, if not maybe slightly more likely, see him going to another team's practice squad, in my opinion. But finally, the last player that was waived with an injury designation was running back Troy Main Pope. And this one sucks. Uh, Troy Main Pope, you know, he, I thought that he was built like a good running back, built very similar to Doug Martin, 5'9", 200-something pounds. I thought he was a bowling ball of a running back. He just didn't get too many opportunities uh, in game time situations due to his, uh, you know, small nagging injuries type thing. And I do want to say real quick on the case of Lawrence White, he also had a decent of enough camp as well, but no really big standout-ish type plays. And I think a similar thing rings true in the case of Troy Main Pope. Uh, he came in there, I thought he did a serviceable job in camp at running back, but he didn't do anything that would turn heads, that would wow coaches. He was just kind of a guy who was going through the motions, wasn't messing up or anything, but wasn't doing anything that was over the top like, whoa, this is amazing. This guy's earned a roster spot type here. So, again, it does suck getting weighed with an injury designation. I could potentially see him reverting to the IR um, if he does clear waivers, so we will have to see with that. I do think he could maybe be brought back on a futures contract later on if he is a reverted to the IR. Um, maybe they eventually waive him from the IR, which is a thing that can be done. And he's a guy who I could see <sighs> maybe, I was, I was going to say end up on the Buccaneers practice squad, but I also got to think about CJ Procise. I think that CJ Procise would be more likely to end up on the Bucks practice squad than Troy Main Pope. But I could see Pope ending up on somebody's practice squad. There's always use for small power type backs and I think there are a handful of teams out there in the league that could use something like that, especially in the case of an emergency if they need to call somebody up. So I do believe that Troy Main Pope could end up on a practice squad somewhere. There are a lot more 
spots available now in this league, and we'll just have to wait and see. He has been a veteran for a few years as well, which I think is an added benefit for him. But guys, that's it. That's all the players that have been cut. Quentin Bell, uh, it sucks because he's been on the channel before. Nate Brooks, you know, I was pulling for him. TJ Simmons, he's a friend of the channel. Lawrence White and uh, Troy Main Pope as well, I think were guys who were young developmental type guys. It always sucks to talk about moves like this and videos like this because you don't want to see people lose their jobs. But that is how it is at the end of the day here in the NFL and... I wish nothing but the best for all five of these guys in whatever opportunities present themselves in the future, and I do think opportunities will present themselves in the future for all five of these guys. But leave me your thoughts down in the comment section down below, guys. What do you think about all these roster cuts that were made? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.